Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's public webinar. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Um, as you've heard before, the reason we do these public webinars is to promote our uh, products. The next uh, one we have coming up is the intensive that goes from uh, the middle of next month um, to the middle of the following month. Uh, this is going to be the last full intensive I do. That doesn't mean we won't do some educational programs, but it's going to be the last full intensive that's about four and a half weeks. Obviously, uh, I will do my best to go out on a, on a really high note. All right, we'll do a, a more of a commercial about that in a few minutes, but we talked about this morning. There's, there's a couple things that come to my mind uh, this morning. One of them is probably the most difficult concept that I ever talk about. Anytime I bring up this concept, it brings up numerous questions and lack of understanding, et cetera, because it's complex. As you know, we focus on the market's continuous two-way auction process. There's three components to the auction. There's time, price, and volume. Price advertises opportunity. Volume measures the success or failure of those opportunities. And time regulates those opportunities. What I'm going to focus on today is one element of time. That element is as the market was coming down this morning and it would hit a low, a logical place would you expect to see a bounce? The market did, it stayed there for a considerable period of time, but it didn't really advance and it kept coming down. So what happens when the market, you know, gets a fast drop and then it just slows time is now in favor of the buyer when enough time passes and the buyer doesn't take advantage of that time reverts back to the seller it doesn't happen very often but that's what's happened that's what happened this morning the market would come down fairly sharply and it would just sit there so when it came down and it looked like it was really struggling to go lower, but it wasn't getting much. But there really was no lift. So what happens? Time, when, it, when you get that drop and it starts, you know, they're pushing at it, but it's not going any lower. Time goes to the buyer. As time passes and the buyer is not able to take advantage of that, the market then reverts back to the seller. That happened several times this morning. The last, the last, not this break right now, but the one just before this, the market came down exactly to, um, maybe it was half back from overnight. And it, it had a pretty good bounce from there. But number one, it was half back from overnight, very mechanical, and there was no excess. That was another indication that the market was going to continue to trade lower. So what we have is what we have is a trend day right now. We're one time framing lower. And what I think I've seen happening this morning, I think the short term traders have been buying the breaks because they're excited we're above, you know, we're above the 5800 level. And it looks to me like there was some more serious selling, selling on every little rally in the market. Overnight inventory was very long. Now, there's another little detail in here. It is very unusual when an auction lasting high is made in the over-the-counter market or during electronic trade. It can happen. And, but it's a piece of information 
you want to carry forward because we did not take out we did not take out the uh, the overnight high if you were watching the overnight there was one level the market kept coming down to it probably i think it was eight or nine times so again it just told me that there was a tremendous amount of mechanical buying let me see if i can let me i'm going to split out the overnight Just take this level, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Got through it a little bit. But this is what short-term traders were just getting. They were buying for, I mean, if you take about the one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five, over five hours, they were mechanically buying on every little pullback. And that just got inventory unbelievably long. Everybody was late to the party. They didn't want to miss it. Um, and this, incidentally, this did what you see so often. It'll take this out one time in the overnight. Then it makes a high, and then the markets, if it's going to go down, it's off. This is, I've seen this pattern over and over again. But when you see this, this ought to tell you right now that be very cautious inventory particularly in the weakest hands, is getting very, very long. Okay, so now we're back. We, we've come back down. We're getting a little more of a bounce. We're back at the 5,800 level. So the market is still focused on that 5,800 level. If you go back, so many times, what has happened before has a lot to say about what happens going forward. If you were watching the market yesterday morning, uh, let me see, let me, um, here was yesterday morning's high, just a couple of ticks below the 5,800 level, left two ticks of excess. The sellers were mechanically selling at the 5,800 level. When you see that, that is so exacting, that is more than likely an indication that was short-term sellers. As they sold the market then most of yesterday, what they were doing is getting inventory very short. Now, this is not good excess. This is very mechanical selling. It's not good excess, but you know, the freighters, do what works till it doesn't work anymore. But even if you look at this shape yesterday, this is a kind of a B shape. You know, it's kind of thin up here, and then you kind of got the, the loop of the B down here. So there was mechanical selling here yesterday, just a couple of ticks, you know, from 5,800, very exacting. You got some short covering, an indication by the kind of the, the loop of the B. So what was happening overnight, or not overnight, daytime frame inventory was getting short. And you look at value was, value was basically unchanged. So from the market selling all day yesterday, they really got very little and the inventory was getting very short. And then of course, last night, you know, uh, when the market finally traded above 5,800, that brings in the momentum traders and everybody gets excited and short-term money just goes crazy on the upside. They don't think about risk. They're so anxious, afraid they're gonna miss something. And of course that got inventory exceptionally long. Now, before we go to commercial, well, I'll take a couple of questions, but then before we go to commercial, there's one other thing I wanna throw out here. What is, the biggest number of the week, more than likely. It's PCE tomorrow. Now, I don't know what PCE is gonna be. I have no idea. I don't even think about those things other than the fact of one of the things that we have talked about in our intensives is the wisdom of crowds. This wisdom of crowds, idea goes back, you know, in the 17th century when they'd have uh, carnivals and the carnivals, they'd have people guess how many marbles were in a bottle uh, or something like that. And there was very seldom 
that anybody got it right. However, when they took all the entries, added them up and divided by the number of participants, it was unbelievable how close the average was. Even though no particular person was close, the average was very close. Now you carry this forward, and this these same experiments have been carried out, um, you know, at, at schools like Harvard, Yale, and MIT, where they'll put the big marble bottle of marbles again, have the students all guess. Very few are, very few get it right. However, the wisdom of the crowd um, is very close. Now I don't know. I can't prove that. I don't know anything about it scientifically. I've read about it, but I've observed that in the market over the years, and I have been amazed at how often it is correct. And that came to my mind this morning when we're talking about PCE tomorrow. It is the is, and I don't know. I mean, this is all speculation, but is the wisdom of, of crowds telling us that PCE is going to be somewhat of a disappointing number? Now, also going along with that i'm watching the market this morning and you know some of the numbers were um, a little bit soft and you would have thought that there would have been a rally in the bond market but i'm looking at the, the one market that i have up to look at is the uh, 10 year and if you looked at the 10 year yield this morning the 10 year yield was actually rising um and that's unusual that's not what you would normally see um with what the numbers were this morning so anyhow i i've just thrown out a, a a few things the last um the wisdom of crowd i have no scientific proof i've just i've read about it i've observed it in the market and i have been amazed at how often um it has had some value Ken, let's take a couple of questions um this point. Okay. Uh, would Jim be able to provide some lip service to monitoring for continuation? I became so focused on gap guidelines uh, value and, and new, but disregarded that the NQ market was 100% long. Had my homework drafted and everything, but I couldn't get on board the train. Tempo was good. All thing, all the things. I just got stuck on that one uh, piece of data. The gap well, guideline. I mean, the, the monitoring for continuation on the downside was there. I mean, it's clearly what it was. You, you're one time framing, you're one time framing lower in the market. You got very insignificant bounces early on. Told you that there was no, there was no real lift. You had some, you know, people bringing back some. Uh, um, some shorts, but you didn't get any real lift. So if you were monitoring for continuation on the downside, there was nothing. I mean, look, there's an excess high. We're one time framing lower on the on the market. Uh, so I mean, that was what it was. And particularly the fact that there's when it would when it would make a new low uh, until we got to half back from overnight, there was no real lift at all. So the monitoring for continuation was actually relatively easy this morning. Okay, what else? I guess maybe maybe another adjacent question and, and more relevant to what the person was asking then, rather than monitoring for continuation, is there a way that you make sure that you don't get stuck on one data point that you're taking in the whole picture? Because they said they got stuck on that one data point, couldn't, and then couldn't. <laughs> well, couldn't get that, on board and do anything. I mean that happens. The only way you're going to do away with that is ex experience. There's no, there's no magic. There's no magic to that. You know, you have those things that are, can be taught, and you have those things that have to be learned. And today, I mean, I understand value was higher, and, and price was higher, and it was really kind of look exciting. And yes, it was hard to focus. But if you just looked at the market. You follow what the market was doing, and the market was going lower. Like I say, you one time you had an excess high. You had no lift when it would come down to a place where the market would slow, 
and where you would and it'd be it'd be selling, 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 and you weren't getting any immediate continuation, you think, oh, it's gonna bounce, is what you normally see. But it didn't bounce. Instead, it turned and took another um push to the downside. They say that's you don't see that very often, but that's what was there today. That was time. Remember what I said early on, and this doesn't happen very often, and it's a very difficult concept. The market goes down to a low, and it really slows down. Time reverts to the buyer. If the buyer is unable to take advantage of that, then time reverts back to the seller, and that's what was happening consistently today. Okay, what else? Okay. Um, the value area high from yesterday was supported here at the 11 a.m. time period, and we have a high in the overnight session. This is an auction that's, is this an indication that the auction is not over? Well, the, the first, I, I you know, I, I don't use value area highs and lows. I know some people do, but I don't use them. What would tell you, the, the auction is one time framing lower at this point. Okay, the first indication, the first indication that change was taking place would be the cessation of one time framing lower. As of now, we've not had that cessation of one time framing lower. Okay, let's take a break. Jen, would you do a commercial and then we'll come back and take more questions. Sure. Okay, real quick, one second. Let me take this screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, um, so for those of you, if you haven't already, please join our mailing list. Uh, we did have to switch platforms uh, more recently. And so if you were subscribed before and then you just notice you're not getting our emails anymore, that might be the reason why. So you can go to Jim Dalton Trading slash subscribe and you'll have to make sure that uh, you opt into our emails when you get a confirmation email. Uh, just also uh, to mention the third article in our six article series will be released next week on Monday. Um, we've, you know, we've already done two on the past two Mondays. Jim, I didn't know if you wanted to recap the last one just to mention about that, but uh, the title of the, of the last one was, um, let me have, The Great Disconnect. I'll talk, when you get done with the commercial, I'll talk okay. about it. Okay, no problem. So you can sign up for our mailing list here. Remember, if you don't opt in, when you get the confirmation email, you're not going to be added and you st and you won't receive our emails. And there have been some folks who've been writing in saying, hey, I didn't get that email. Um, and that's probably why. Um, so you can sign up there. Also, for those that are new, uh, if you haven't followed us on uh, YouTube, if you haven't subscribed there already, uh, you might want to do that. Uh, because uh, we sub we release the week ahead every weekend. And here's another place where you can also subscribe to our emails. So as Jim mentioned earlier, we are having our last long format intensive, long format meaning four and a half weeks. And it's going to run from October 16th to November 15th. You can go to our courses page and see that the intensive is uh, featured up at the top. Uh, the schedule has also been posted there so that you can see when we're doing special presentations, the timing of, timings of all of our webinars. These are posted in Eastern time, and of course you adjust for your time zone. Um, it does have a prerequisite requirement to join us for a live intensive, and that is the foundation and application of the market profile e-course. Uh, right now we do have limited time discounted bundles, so you get a discount for purchasing more than one course. And these are going to be available through October 6th only. And the reason for that is that, you know, 10 days till the start of the intensive, we know that it's not, um, most people uh, who do that after the 6th probably aren't going to have enough time to get through the foundation e-course prior to the start of the intensive. Uh, so if you need any details on the foundation course specifically alone, you can go here and you'll see that we also have uh, an outline of things covered, okay? Um, by all means, if you have any questions about any of our courses, uh, give us a call at the number at the bottom of our screen or shoot us an email at dalton at jimdaltontrading.com. And for those of you who are long, long time followers, maybe did an in intensive in the past, um, but haven't 
haven't joined us one in recent years, uh, you do not have to have the foundation application in the market profile e-course as a prerequisite requirement, provided you have done an intensive with us previously, and we can verify that. So if that's something you're interested in doing, uh, just contact us and we can try to look that up or, you know, you can check your email if maybe you've got uh, an old receipt or whatnot. Okay. And, uh, oh, one other thing to mention, all of the webinars are recorded for the intensive. You'd get access to materials for one year after it finishes so that you have enough time to go back and review everything since it's so webinar heavy. So for those of you that live in other time zones, that maybe it's not so convenient to join us live for every webinar, or you have a day job uh, and can't join us for every webinar, not a problem. Um, we have lots of lots of clients who are trying to transition from a full-time job to trading or just want to learn, learn more and don't want to miss this last intensive. Okay, Jim, I will give you the screen back. Thank you. There you go. Jen mentioned uh, the last article, the Great Disconnect. What I was trying to say in the in the article, and you can go back and read it, is so many times short-term traders make a huge mistake by thinking about investment um, information versus trading information. I know sometimes when people ask, when we're doing these webinars, and people will ask a question that's, you know, more related to what do I think on the market long term or this or that or or the investment, I know that the chances are they're going to have problems trading because they haven't made that disconnect between being an investor and a trader. They are so dissimilar and you start crossing those, it's probably going to give you cognitive dissonance and very poor returns. Trading, trading is trading. You know, our markets continually get too long. They get too short. As, as you can see this morning, I mean, inventory got exceptionally long. People got, you know, very, very excited overnight. And they didn't even think about the risk they were taking. But that's what about, they're, it's, they're unrelated. And when you start making decisions, I'm going to buy it because I think it's an investment or it's creeping in your head, you're probably headed for trouble as a short-term trader. Now, this coming week, the article I'm working on now for the coming week is has to do with early morning confidence. And that early morning confidence helps you, you know, make an early assessment of the odds for a trend day or a rotational day. You know, about 15% uh, of the days are trend days, high percentage of days are rotational days, but early morning confidence helps us to, if you can, you know, learn to think that way, will help you a lot towards having some idea of what time of day we're looking at. Okay, Jen, let's go back to questions that we have. Okay. Is there such a thing as looking at too much information? For example, too many TPO profiles. I'm curious about what size or resolution screen does Jim look at? And the screen share seems like he isn't looking at a ton of profiles intraday. No, I do not. I look, I keep, if the, if the market's fairly volatile, I keep it in twos in there. And I Two don't tick increments do, for this, for the increment size, uh, the tick increment, just so that people don't get confused. And I, I don't go back and look at lots of profiles because as a short-term trader, I am concerned with what's going on right now. A lot of people consider their homework, they go back and they look at profiles for many months and they'll have, you know, a prominent point of control and they'll say, well, is that a reference? And yes, you can definitely overload the information. And what do I do? I look at, uh, I'm always aware of the trend. And I always start off with a bar chart, to understand what's going on with, with the trend, you know, in the market. Then I look to see, you know, I make my assessment. Do I think the trend is young or old? And, you know, a lot of that has to do with volume. It has to do with the shapes of the profile and the emotion. In it. But then when I come in in the morning, um, I start off. The first thing I do in the morning is overnight inventory, long or short. I know there's a huge, there's a huge potential 
for uh, uh, correction to overnight inventory, probably in the 70, 75% range. So if overnight inventory is long, there's a good chance that we're gonna get a counter auction or a correction. I know if overnight inventory is long and we don't get that correction, then there's probably a pretty good chance we're gonna continue in the direction of the overnight inventory. That's also where I come into the confidence. So I look very early on to see what was the confidence. So look at today's high. There's the opening, the green dot. You know, what was the confidence? The confidence was to the downside. Overnight inventory was long, the confidence was to the downside, you know, one time frame lower all the way through. Okay, other questions? Yes, okay. Uh, would you say, what would you say is a large gap compared to the one that could potentially get filled? I don't, I don't focus on that. I, I don't, I, I couldn't honestly answer the, the question. I look at, I look at the gap and I'm looking to see, you know, the gap trading guidelines. And like this morning was tricky because we say that on an upper gap, the best buying opportunity on an upper gap is when the market attempts to fill that gap and trading slows. So based on that, there were times when you would have wanted to buy this morning. But remember what I introduced, which is doesn't happen very often. It's one of the most difficult concepts to understand. But which, I'm repeating it, but when the market came down and it slows, and it spent quite a bit of time in some of these places. Time reverts to the buyer. If the buyer doesn't take advantage of that time, then pressure reverts back to the downside to where the market was going originally. And that's what's happened all the way down this morning. The market would stop. It would consolidate a little bit of the break, but no real bounce. There was no real bounce till we got to half back from, uh, from overnight. And then when there was no lift from that, watch out, now the market's going back and uh, move to the downside again. We don't see this very often, but it's very important. And usually when that happens, uh, it's leading up to a pretty big day. Okay, what else? Okay, does the rule, if the gap is filled, but value stays higher, then you should expect a, a later day rally? Does that apply today? No, it's, you know, it's, those are guidelines. Those are just guidelines. There's no, you know, there's, there's no absolute. What, what are you looking at today? The market's on the downside. The market is one time framing lower, okay? So now, how would you monitor for this market? One, do you get a cessation of one time framing? The next downward reference would be, you know, yesterday settle. Following that would be, the overnight low, or I'm sorry, yesterday's low, okay? Now, if you can't get that out, if you sign a stop in here and you, and you don't get downside continuation, all right, then you got a pretty good chance, you know, for a rally. But as long as you're one time framing lower, stay with that, don't out, don't outthink it. Just pay attention to what the market's doing. But remember also, we've got PCE tomorrow. So it's unlikely, I and mean, you could get some short covering in here, but with PCE tomorrow, more than likely the bigger money will, uh, uh, you know, if, if they've done any adjustments, they're probably done with it. So, but that's a that's a big number. PCE tomorrow isn't likely to, um, you know, have the same relevance it had when inflation was really hot. But remember, if there's any aberration in it, it could it could roil the market fairly quickly. Okay. Another question. Okay. Are you trading all day, Jim, or do you pick and choose based on market conditions regardless of the period? I generally trade all day. Now, I have made a lifestyle change. I have moved into a 55 plus active community and uh, I have gotten involved in uh, some writing programs here and some book programs. So there I'm taking I'm taking more personal time uh, than I usually do to have you know involvement in the uh, in the community. But when I'm trading full time, um, 
I, I will trade with the market. I will be there all day. And one of the things that I suggested to be careful about, I remember in my early days, um, market would be slow and I'd say, well, I'll go pick up my laundry. And all of a sudden there'd be a, a big move uh, in there. And so I'm a believer, if I'm going to trade the day, I'm going to trade the day, I want to be there all day because it is amazing how quickly uh, things can change. Okay, final question. Okay. Uh, would you consider the last five days as balance? If so, would you look today having the potential to look above the balance and either find support at the top of the balance or fail and trade towards the balance lows? Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I mean, that's looking for, you know, kind of a mechanical answer to things. Yes, I'm aware we've we've re-entered the balance area, you know, and we see how much is there. But but the first thing I'm going to do, I'm aware of that thing, but I'm going to see if we show cessation of one time framing. We show cessation of one time framing, then there's a better chance that we get a get a rally back up. We continue to one time frame, and then we take the settle out. Now, then we've got a, it increases the odds we trade to the lower end. But again, in my mind, I know we've got a big number uh, tomorrow. But again, don't make it mechanical. You know, the things we talk about, you know, uh, balance and the, the balance trading guidelines, they're, they're, they're good and they're very helpful to keep perspective. But then you have to look at the market and say, what's really going on? Can it do that today? Like you say, monitoring for continuation, are we one time framing lower? Do we cease one time framing? Um, you know, do we take out the uh, yesterday's uh, settle? Or do we stop right here and start to rotate up? Um, so you've, you've, as a short term day trader, you've got to be in touch with what the market is, is doing. Did it get too long? Did it get too short? Et cetera. Okay, final question. Okay, does the tempo seem very slow on the downside? Yes, but remember, remember I said earlier on, tempo seemed very slow several times this morning. So when tempo is slow like this, okay, what I was what I've said twice now, when tempo is slow like this, the advantages turns to the buyer. When the tempo is slow like this and the buyer can't take advantage of it, then it turns back to the seller. This is what we've seen all day. So you, and this is what I've been saying. So you, you can't take it out of context. You've got to be able to understand what's, what's going on. Like I said, it's the most difficult thing I talked about today. This idea that when generally when tempo slows, you know, we think, okay, if the market's going down and tempo slows, we think that increases the odds of a rally. If that rally doesn't come, in other words, the market doesn't take advantage of that of that time then it reverts back to the seller and that's what's been happening today this doesn't happen often but this is the problem too many times people want to memorize rules or guidelines and so many times it's the nuances or the acceptance to those rules that really are important on big days all right let me say thank you very much i hope you find uh, time to join us uh, for one of our educational programs. And thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.